Imagine a world with no numbers. It would be hard, wouldn't it? This is the reality for tribes like the Baraha who inhabit the Amazon. But just how do people function without numbers? Humans count, not in some strange philosophical way, but we assign through numbers, meaning to abstract quantities. And we've been doing this since the Upper Paleolithic. Why? Well, we've almost always had a use for it. This is the Ashango bone, discovered in 1950 by a Belgian geologist, and it dates from around 20,000 to 22,000 years ago. Now it's been rumoured to be a representation of prime numbers, a lunar calendar, and many other strange and wonderful things. But what's key to remember is that these marks are intentional and prove at least a basic understanding of numbers. Another even older find, this 30,000 year old wolf bone discovered in 1930s Czechoslovakia, reveals a similar ancient aptitude for mathematical understanding. But we have to wait another 20,000 years until the Mesopotamians developed their number system. What made this system unique was the fact that it was positional. This meant that instead of having to have unique symbols for every power of their base, they could rely, instead, on the position of the numerals to determine their meaning. Now this number system allowed for increased efficiency, more proficiency, and economic and social benefits for the region. But what are bases? A base is a number, in a number system from which other numbers are built. In English, we have base 10, probably because we have 10 fingers. But despite all humans having 10 fingers, some cultures seem to come up with weird bases. Four, five, six, eight, 12 and 16 being quite common. Why? Probably simply down to anatomy. But the creativity doesn't stop there. In Papua New Guinea, as well as South America, we see systems of body counting, that is, counting on your body. Now these are closed systems, which means that they're hard to expand. However, they are good for numbers less than the highest base. For example, in Kaluli, a language with a base 35 system, you start at your pinky, move your way up your arm to your nose, and then go back down the other side of your body. By doing this, the Kaluli people offload the memorization of higher numerals to their body and reduce the cognitive load of memorizing all these numbers. But now, back to why you clicked on this video. How did the Braha cope without numbers? Well, psychologist Peter Gordon documented the Braha and their sense of numbers. In an experiment, he arranged six batteries on a table and asked the participants to place more of the same batteries in a similar arrangement. The participants answered correctly only 75% of the time from which you might conclude that the Baraha are just naturally bad at counting. But looking further into the results, it becomes apparent that in almost all cases where the participants answered incorrectly, they were very close to the true value. Despite the restriction of number systems, all humans from birth have an innate sense of estimation. In other words, we can accurately comprehend quantities without using exact numbers. But what if the Paraha wanted to count higher? Sure, they could just make more numbers, but what often happens is cultures pick objects in the environment and offload numbers, usually bases, to them. Take the Pomo tribe of California, for example. Often regarded for their excellent counting abilities, the Pomo have unique words for numbers under 20, but they use the word stick or big stick to represent the numbers 
100 and 400 respectively. Here you can see how this would work. Ultimately, counting systems have a hard job. They have to balance the innate abilities of approximation with the environmental challenges its users might face. And yeah, some numbers systems are more useful than others. What I want you to take away from this video though, is that humans are good at adapting to their surroundings. And number systems demonstrate the mathematical creativity that's possible. Now due to factors like urbanisation, conquest, imperialism, etc. Lots of languages are being threatened by extinction. And whole worldviews and cultures are vanishing. Therefore, it's crucial that we appreciate what's to be lost in order that we can save these languages. Thank you for watching, if you found this video informative, please consider subscribing so we can bring you more linguistic content <laughs> uh, and see you next week.